Hello everyone. Long time, absolutely no see. I have had a very busy year working, but now there's a strike on in America with the writers and the actors, which means that there's no work in London. So I've been traveling around for the last week. I was in York for four weeks working on a low budget British production. Currently Saturday the 9th of September. Since Tuesday, I've been in Edinburgh staying at my friend's house um, and on Monday, uh, the day before that, I went to the Lake District and it kind of gave me a travel bug. So now I'm currently about to leave my friend's house and go to Inverness for two nights. I've booked a hostel for tonight that's like on Loch Ness and then a hostel for tomorrow night which is in Inverness because I left it so last minute it was all sold out. And then I don't really know where I'm going after that, but this is going to be like a little road trip of Scotland, maybe Northern England. I might pop into Wales, we'll see. But yeah, I've not made a video since I was in Warsaw in February and I haven't edited that video. So maybe I'll edit that video before I upload this, we'll see. But yeah, I think it's going to be a fun, fun little walk, I hope. I've only got my phone with me. I haven't got any of my fancy cameras, no nothing, no tripods. This is you, me and the world. by don't worry but like big great me look how beautiful this country is like I'm just driving through these like most beautiful landscapes and it's really hard to show because I'm driving so I need to pay attention but this is like straight out of the sky pole I'm in love I still have like an hour and a bit to go I'm meant to be there at 10 past 2 it's currently at 12 37 so Still got a while to go. I'm dying for a wee, but there's not been a single like service stacing in a very long time. And now the journey continues. <laughs> from my hostel and I just stumbled upon the real reason why I'm in the Highlands. Anyway, I still have like 15 minutes to go to my uh, hostel, but I've just stopped by this place that says Jacobite Cruises and they do cruises on the, on Loch Ness. So I might actually look into doing one, maybe tomorrow. Um, I'm just gonna go into the cafe and shop and see what they have to offer. Okay, I'm trying this for a millionth time. <laughs> I'm stopped at a place which is like literally less than a mile away from my hostel. I just stopped somewhere else because I thought I could look at some cows and eat some food, but apparently they were fully booked. Um, so I've stopped in uh, this little town called Biz. It's all in like Scottish, Gaelic. I can't say these places. I can barely say Edinburgh. So I've stopped here. They've got a market on, so I'm going to go there. That's literally why I stopped. And then there's a fish and chip place. So I'm going to go have a little mooch in the market and then go get some food and see where this walk is that I want to do. I think it's the other way, which is really annoying. Um, but I'm going to have a look on all trails to see where the, this walk is. And 
yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm so fascinated by these signs because how did you get this far up into the highlands by driving on the right side of the road? I feel really hot and sweaty it's because it is very hot and sweaty but i have made it to my hostel which is the loch ness inn but in the bunkhouse and this cost me 36 pounds for the night which is actually reasonable and it's like brand new it is so new it's very clean and i got a bathroom bunk so this is the room that i'm going to be sharing with three other people and the person on top of me has just gone for a walk to the shops this is the view of a little creek. Beautiful. And yeah, it comes with towels, clean bedding, lots of space. It's got the toilets in here. I kind of prefer having the toilets in a separate space just because if you need the toilet in the middle of the night, you don't want to be flushing and waking everyone up. So that's just my thoughts on that. Um, I'm going to pack my bag up. I bought a little, little teeny tiny hiking backpack. Um, so that's what I'm going to take on my little hike um, to see a waterfall. It's a steep hill I have to now walk up and I think there's another hill on the other side. Funny thing is, I could have driven this whole way, but no, here I am walking five million miles to get to a waterfall just to look at some water, even though I just saw water there. But I mean like, when you see views like this, it's all worth it. So that sweaty face is Loch Ness. And can you spot Nessie in there somewhere? I mean, considering it's been a myth for a very long time, isn't Nessie dead? Um, but yeah, Loch Ness. And apparently I've got 300 meters until the parking for the hike um, to the falls. So I still don't know how much I've got left. Currently I'm walking 2.6 kilometers. 36 minutes, so it's going to take me 47 minutes to get there, so... Underwhelming, to say the least. <laughs> of my little road trip yesterday let me just plug you guys in yesterday i sat down with my little laptop and i planned the next couple of days i'd already booked a night so i booked one night here in the loch ness inn bunk house i've got a night booked in inverness for tonight my plan today is to go to jacobite cruise which is essentially just a boat that takes you onto Loch Ness. And I booked the 
15 minute one which essentially just takes you on the on their lake and then back to where you started there's also one that takes you to the castle and that was like 30 pounds and i paid 20 pounds for mine so that's what i've got planned this morning i need to be there in like five minutes it takes 10 minutes to drive there and then i'm gonna go to culloden the battlefield of culloden yes I have watched Outlander. Yes, I am interested in history. So I'm going to go there. I paid that. That was £15 for like a guided tour, tour of the battlefield. So I'm quite excited for that. And then I'm going to go into Inverness, have a look around, maybe look in some shops. Not really got anything planned other than that, but I'm just going to go with the flow. It is a Sunday, so I'm assuming things are going to shut quite early. But now I just need to drive in the rain because why not? <laughs> inflatable life rafts. In an emergency, the crew would launch these or they can float. These do not throw anything overboard. Normal licensing. So I just finished the tour, which is really, 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 really good. It's a nice little hour cruise on the on Loch Ness. Now I've got an hour and a bit until my Culloden Battlefield tour starts. Uh, I believe I booked the noon one and it's currently half past ten. So i got an hour and a half. I'm going to drive, probably find somewhere to have a coffee or something. Just have a little much about, but yeah. Beautiful lake, beautiful scenery, and a really good tour. So I do recommend it. Jack bike cruises um, on Loch Ness. So I stopped by the cows again that I stopped to buy yesterday, and they're so much closer today. Look at them. And then there's another one over there. now made it to Culloden Battlefield and if you're driving top tip get here way in advance because there's not a lot of parking and there's a lot of people <laughs> please gather around please gather around <laughs> I love the skies here. Please gather around, gather around. I'll, uh... So I've just finished the tour, which was really, really good. The tour guide Sally took us through the entire history of the Jacobite Rising, what ended up happening here at Culloden Moor. Obviously, I have watched Outlander and I have read some of the books, so I did already know some of these things, but it is really, really interesting and fascinating history. So these red flags symbolize the government, so the non Jacobite side. And this is where the their lines were and then if you can tell if i zoom in there some blue flags i'm going to go over there soon that's where the jacobite um lines were so on the day of the battle there was 8,000 governmental army and then there was 
5,000 of the Jacobites. So one of the reasons why um, they believe that Jacobites lost is because the Highlanders were so used to winning any battle through the Highland Charge. But this, as you can tell, is a really, really, really flat area. So they couldn't utilize their tactics. So these walls here are a recreation of walls that used to exist. So this field that's behind me here um, used to be enclosed by this massive wall. And the government's army would, on the day of battle, or before the day of the battle, they uh, created some gaps in the, in the wall. And in that, in that way, they could get through and get behind the Jacobite army. And in that way, eliminate any retreating troops as they were retreating from across the moor. They came in, swooped in, and they managed to kill 700 Jacobite men in minutes. Um, and that was the end of the Jacobite Rising. And with that, Bonnie Prince Charlie retreated, fled the country and uh, died at the age of 60. But yeah, this is then the line where the Jacobite army was. There's one of the blue flags and apparently because they don't own the land that's beyond this National Trust area, the actual line, the actual Jacobite line is about four fields down that way. Another thing that might be the reason why the Jacobites lost is that their left, left flank on this side here had to tread through really sticky, black, muddy bog. So by the time the middle of the Jacobites had managed to get through the government, the government's army, uh, their left flank was still struggling. And by the time they managed to get round, it was too late. Um, so this is all fenced off now and they've got cattle in there trying to preserve the area um, as, best as, as best as they can. And I'm now going to come up to the actual gravesite. So this is the entire, this is the battlefield. This is where it happened. And the gravesides are right up here. It's mass graves. And they do have some markers just to show where the graves were. I'm now in Inverness, just having a little mooch in the shops. Now I'm starving though. It's like three o'clock and I haven't eaten since breakfast, which was at 7.30. I've just had dinner in Urquhart's. I had some haggis, which I have come to absolutely love. That was quite a reasonable price, 16 pounds for haggis um, and a cook. Now I'm just gonna continue my shopping. It is currently 20 past four and I can't remember the last time I was this tired. Maybe it's just all the driving and traveling that just takes it out of you. But I've been walking around Inverness for the last like two hours and there's not much to do here. Whenever I Google what to do in Inverness, it essentially tells you to go somewhere else. Like go on day trips away from Inverness and it's not really the point. So I've come back to my hostel because most shops close in half an hour anyway so i haven't really got anything to do in town i'm essentially just going to show you how i do uh, when i go to a hostel pretty much so i've got my i've got a little bag a little like, carry-on size bag and then in my boot i have pretty much all the clothes i own because i was away for work for four weeks so i just pick whatever i'm going to wear the next day pack it along with my towel toiletries pajamas any charges i need my laptop my ipad a book and now I'm gonna bring some crochet up and that's pretty much the plan I might watch some Virgin River because that's out um, I watched four episodes so far and it's so cheesy but oh my god it's addictive so here in the back under this blanket I have all of my shit so here's my like laundry I've got some shoes a little day bag and a bunch of postcards I've bought so far and essentially what I do is just open my suitcase which has all of my clothes in it do, 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 do. if i can manage this with one hand and then in here is all my clothes and now comes the mission of deciding what to wear tomorrow turns out it's gonna be 12 degrees <laughs> tomorrow um autumn is officially here 
So I need to figure out what is warm. What's how I got that to warm, but also isn't gonna have me sweating all over the place when I go to the viaduct. This is my meal. I call this girl dinner. Girl, girl dinner. And just like that, it's morning. We're saying goodbye to Inverness and driving to Glenfinnan in the rain. So it's not the best day to do this thing, but it's the only day I've got. So I'm gonna jump in the car, start driving. It's a two hour drive. stopped on this road i'm still on the a82 driving to glenfinnan i've still got like 45 minutes to go but look at this phenomenal view behind me you know when you think you've seen the most beautiful view and then you drive around the corner and there's another freaking beautiful view oh, this one i have to stop at this is the commando memorial this seems to be a memorial for some commander or something. There's a war memorial up there. I just put my jumper on because it's a little bit chilly, but I'm gonna show you this view because it's fantastic. I am still in a rush. I literally have an hour until the train arrives. It's currently 9.55 and the Jacobite steam train passes by Glenfinnan Viaduct in 50 minutes and already the car park is pretty full so I do recommend if you are looking to drive here to come early but yeah this is where the, the train goes past in, uh, in Harry Potter when Harry and Ron try and catch it up in the little flying car You can already see all of those people out there waiting to see the train go by. That just shows that despite the weather being rather horrendous, it has been raining all morning, people are still gonna come here and watch this train go by. Funny thing that the second it stops raining, that's when the train is passed. So that's done now. Um, that was <laughs> that was an experience and a half. So it, like the sun started shining, and I was like, oh, I wish I brought my sunglasses. And then the train is like it's supposed to pass about quarter two. Quarter two come around, it starts like raining a little bit. Put my waterproof jacket on that was sitting on. Fifteen minutes later, the train finally comes, and it's pouring down the rain. So the content is awful, um, the pictures are not great, and I realized that I didn't actually look at the train a single time with my own eye. I only looked 
through my camera lens. I mean, how freaking beautiful is in Scotland? Like, Scotland is probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. The landscape's just so freaking drastic. And I've just been in the Lake District and that was amazing, but this is just something freaking out. Um, it is currently half past 11. I'm gonna hop in the car, probably drive to Fort William, have some lunch, actually an early lunch for once and so not a four o'clock lunch, and then drive to the Skyfall Road, which I think is like another hour and a half, two hour drive from here, because everywhere I'm going today, I have to drive all the way down to then drive the same road all the way back. But first, the gift shop. I've come to Fort William at the base of Ben Nevis, which is behind me, but it's very cloudy. You can't really see it. Um, it's a big mountain. Um, and yeah, just gonna grab some lunch and have a little look around. Mm -hmm. I have driven two meters and again it is fucking beautiful like <laughs> i hate that I keep repeating myself it's just so freaking beautiful So I was driving down this really long single track road all the way down and I passed it because I couldn't see the blog post I'd read said that there was a makeshift sign and I couldn't see it and now I'm driving past and of course stopping like anyone stopping by it and now there's a man with a dog there. So I'm just going to sit in this lay by even though this is what you really shouldn't be doing and I'm waiting for him to leave so that I can park up and take a photo. Right over there, Judy Dench and Daniel Craig were once stood. And as someone who works in the locations department, this location and the Harry Potter location, Jesus Christ, how did they find, how did you find these places? This is just a single track road, like where is their base? It baffles me, um, but very, very cool. Skyfall is like one of my favorite films and here I am at like the coolest flipping location ever I'm gonna try and get like the perfect photo and then I'm gonna skedaddle I have finally finally made it to my hostel and I just checked in they gave me the top bunk I'm almost six foot that's how high up it is I literally went down I was like is there any way I can get a bottom bunk and the same room had this one free. So this is my bunk, because I would have shat myself otherwise. Oh my God, this is very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I heated up my pot of Aldi noodles. Disgusting. I found a seafood restaurant. So I'm gonna see if they got a table. I can book anything online, but they got crayfish and I've been craving crayfish for so long. And I feel, what other place in Scotland is there to eat crayfish, especially the city. 
dinner I had the uh, crayfish and uh, not very happy with my choice because they didn't taste of anything I guess I'm just used to the Swedish west coast crayfish but the wine was exquisite the bread was really nice and I have really no complaints and now I'm just enjoying the evening in Oban feel a little bit more refreshed I do want to get a pint though or a whiskey I did have a glass of wine. Uh, that cost me £35, by the way, that entire meal. Uh, so, <laughs> a little bit over budget for the day, but this is my last day in Scotland. It's a beautiful evening, and I'm uh, really sad to be leaving Scotland because um, I need to go back to England tomorrow. Morning! What day is it today? Tuesday, the 12th of September. It's currently just on nine o'clock. This is when the free parking runs out outside the hostel. So I'm back in the car. One last time in Scotland, unless I stop in Glasgow, <laughs> undecided. Currently it says four hours and 15 minutes to drive to the hostel in Hadrian's Wall. So that's a long, long old journey. Uh, it's 211 miles, 10 to 11 now. It would get me there for just after three and I'll probably stop somewhere on the way to have lunch. Don't know what I'm saying. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna hit some tunes up start driving hopefully when i get to glasgow it should be like two hours or so i might have some lunch we'll see i probably won't go into central to glasgow because i can't be arsed with that but the closer i get to glasgow the more we'll see what happens morning i am knackered it's currently three o'clock. I've pretty much driven for four hours straight and I still have an hour to go. Now I'm just stopped here. There's a McDonald's. Get a coffee and continue the drive. It's one more hour to go. now half five i finally made it to hadrian's wall and the youth hostel the sill seems quite new i put a wash on there's no tumble dryer but there's a drying room so i'm just washing all my t-shirts um so that i've got some more clothes just in case i decide to ow stay on more a couple more days just because uh it was free currently at Hadrian's Wall and in Northumberland. It's at the north of the Pennines National Park and Hadrian's Wall is essentially 70-80 mile long, probably more, I'm lying. It essentially stretches the whole from east to west. It was built in the Roman time 
they built it in order to protect the Roman Empire from the then non conquered Caledonia up north, so Scotland and then the northernmost bits of England. But yeah, it's just a nice little morning. It's 9 a.m. I'm on this little walk on my own. That's the wall right there. So that is the sycamore tree. This is the sycamore gap, also called the Robin Hood tree. Um, I made it. This is the end of my circular thing. I'm gonna go <laughs> that way after I've taken a couple of pictures because anything for the gram, am I right? So yeah, that's the end of this loop. It's two kilometers to here from where I started. I started mine pretty much just by my hostel, which is across the road. So stay in the YHA, the sill, if you want to come here, it's 15 pounds a night for a dorm room. And then you can go on little beautiful walks like this. That took commitment. I mean, these views have nothing on the Scottish Highlands, but they're still absolutely freaking marvellous. I have, a, I have a terrible feeling that I'm going to have to turn around and walk back the same freaking hills I've just climbed up and down a gazillion times. Or I have to walk all the way back to my hostel and then get the bus to get my car. Um, I have made a big mistake. I should have turned around a long time ago. I've only done three kilometres. It's been an hour. But I thought I could go down towards that way and not continue walking there but just looking now that's where all the cows and their calves are so I don't think that's a good idea to walk that way back and getting to the road is too far away like getting to the main road where I drove so I currently have 46 minutes <laughs> to make it back up and down these freaking hills to get back to my parking in time. I'm gonna have a bag of crisps and a bag of chocolate chip cookies because that's all I packed uh, and then head back to the car. I managed to find an easier route. That's just on the side to like that's where I walked earlier up oh, this steep hill. The only thing is I have to walk through all the sheep and with that a lot of sheep shit. I found the road that I wanted to walk on. It only took me two kilometers to actually find it. I could have just walked another 10 minutes down past the walls through the, where I was walking and I would have been able to find this. Walk done. I made it back. No ticket. Probably could have taken it easier back. Um, all done. And I'm hungry. Another day, another car vlog. It is currently 11.33. I am somewhere on the M1, A1, somewhere. I'm at the Washington Services outside Newcastle and I'm heading back to London. I decided well, my walk yesterday in Hadrian's Wall completely freaking knocked me out. I'm so tired. My back sore from sleeping on these shitty hostel beds. It's a six hour drive and I've already done an hour of it. And me and my mate Shannon got tickets for Plaza Suite next year. In time for my birthday, we're gonna see Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick on stage together. I'm so excited. It cost us a hundred pounds each, but it's fine. We were, we were ready to pay 150. But yeah, I've got a, ca a caster. I've got a little caramel latte. 
to fuel me for the first couple of hours. I've got another five hours to drive, 300 miles. So yeah, thank you for so much for watching this video. I know it's been a long time since I uploaded. Um, I'm gonna try and upload the <laughs> Poland vlog that I made in February. And um, yeah, cheers, thanks for watching. Subscribe, because maybe one day I'll make another video. <laughs> Who knows?